Yeah, I brought to you by DigiKey this week. It is Analog Devices. Lady Ada, what is INMPI new product introduction of the week? I'm glad you asked. Uh, this week's INMPI is going to go long. It is the LTC 4332 um, Linear Tech, which was purchased by Analog Devices. So it's Analog Devices, but sorts of the LTC. Um, but still, you know, the quality and reliability of Linear Tech, they make luxurious electronic components. Uh, now available at analog pr uh, devices pricing and distribution. Um, and this one is long because it is a long distance SPI encoder extender, uh, which is, and I always love to put cats in these photos. So here's a long cat. So this device, um, it's a S SPI extender, and we stock a similar chip, the LTC4311, which is an I squared C um, bus. It's not like an extender, it's like an active terminator, but it's kind of in the same family of like, usually I2C and SPI are protocols that you use on a PCB. They're meant for short distances of like 10 centimeters at the most. Um, they're meant to go fast. They're meant to, um, you know, just connect from one component to the other. Maybe you'd have a short cable, but they're not meant for long distances, but sometimes you need to have long distances. So what's cool about the LTC 4332 is it's like a transparent, um, differential SPI port expander, sorry, ex extender that can go up to 1,200 meters, uh, which is 12 football fields. I just love using football fields yeah. as a measure. So very, very long cabling. Um, you're not going to get the full 2 megahertz max speed over it. Um, we got like 50 kilohertz or something, but still, uh, it's pretty amazing to be able to do SPI over such a long distance. So um, the way this works is you need two chips. One is the controller and one is the peripheral. And on the left-hand side, you see the controller. Uh, you get the SCK MISO MOSI pin. So that's like the data in, out, and clock. There are four um, peripheral select pins, SS1 through SS4. Note that SS4 is for the chip itself. So you actually only get like three chip select pins, which means on the other side, you could have up to three SPI devices that you can address. So it's like you would have it on the other side and then, you know, you would have like a display and then maybe, you know, SD card and then maybe, you know, a thermocouple all on SPI. They can share those pins and they each have their own chip select pin. Um, and then in between, and there's also an interrupt uh, back. So you can have one interrupt line go backwards um, to like alert you when like data is ready and stuff. And in between you have cat five, cat six cabling. Um, so twisted pair, it's differential and the chips encode the SPI commands over the differential pair for TX and RX. And so you can use like your standard long ethernet cords, which are low cost and reliable. And then a link light lets you know um, that they're connected. So, you know, really easy to use. Um, what's nice about this, a couple like little details that I saw that I thought were uh, really well designed. One, I like that it's like transparent, right? You, you just, you connect it up and the controller and the peripheral have no idea that it's going through this long differential link um, that's handled for you. It can do all four SPI modes because I know that there's some sensors and devices um, that use, you know, most things use uh, mode zero, but some use mode three or mode two or mode one. Um, and it can switch between the two. So it, it will dynamically do the right thing, even if you have multiple different states um, sorry, different modes of SCK, you know, polarity and and uh, latching. As long as the chip select line is active low, um, it'll automatically do the right thing for all your different uh, peripherals on the opposite side. Um, in the middle is this differential, you know, protocol. It's not published. It's like you know some whatever proprietary protocol, and. Um, you connect one to the other, so you can't have multiple like peripherals on the side. Like it is one to one. Um, they have some you know limitations on how much your ground can flow. There, I think it has to be within twenty five volts. You do have to select the speed, um, and I think I'll show that later. But the speed tells it how much to overclock the differential link, which will determine your max bandwidth, which is like your max you know max bandwidth. S clock speed versus the distance. So it's like a trade off of how far you can go versus how fast you can go. You can't go the highest speed at the longest distance. It's inversely, inversely correlated. 
Um, okay, so this is the inside of it. There's the encoder and decoder, the link, um, the SPI pins, uh, the FIFOs, which we'll talk about. The FIFOs actually um, matter when you're doing um, receiving. Um, the link light, and there is the device itself is also an SPI peripheral, which you can configure with registers, although you don't have to. So the link light, I thought was kind of like a nice detail. So just like Ethernet, when you plug it in and it detects that the other side is connected, um, an LED will go on, um, and it will also like make sure that you, um, you, you know, matches the right speed. You also query it over SPI if you don't want to like use the LED. Um, the link speed, like I mentioned, you can use two pins or you can set it with, uh, with the SPI registers. So there's eight levels and each one you can see on um, second to last column, it goes from two megahertz down to 25 kilohertz. And that will change the max length of cable from hundred feet to 1200 meters or more. So it's one of those things where, you know, it does depend on your cabling, your power supply, you know, is it outside? What is the noise like in the area? Um, your, your differential, uh, your grounding, whatever. Try the, you know, I mean, they'll probably over-specified it, but maybe go like one level less. So if you need uh, to go 250 feet, maybe it says use uh, speed index five, but maybe use speed index four. So you have a little bit of leeway. Um, and of course, you'll want to go as slow as the slowest device. Like each device has to share the same SCK. So if you have a device that is, can't be clocked faster than um, 100 kilohertz, you're going to have to set the entire bus to 100 kilohertz. Okay, uh, next up. Oh, there, so there is registers. It doesn't seem like you need to use these. A lot of it is just like reporting on um, faults, failures. Um, you can change the speed index, overflow, underflow and word length, and the word length has to do with um, the latency. So there's only one thing you just have to watch out for that might affect your firmware programming. So if you're only writing from the controller to the peripheral, the data is, is transmits, you know, transparently. But if you're reading data in, because it has to read the byte and then transmit it out, because like, you know, if you use SPI, usually you clock things out, but then you can also clock things in on the same, um, clock in and you'd have it be both MOSI and MISO active on the same SCK signal. Obviously it has to get a byte at a time. And so it's going to be one byte behind when it reads data. Data written is going to be done on the clock because it can like send that byte at once. But as it reads it in, it's going to be delayed. So your firmware might have to, if it's reading from the SPI interface, it'll have to drop the first byte. And then from then on, it'll be synchronized. So you know, just something to watch out for. Um, if you are reading data, like there's a lot of sensors that don't, but if you do, you do, you might have to change your firmware a little bit just to like be aware that um, the first byte gets dropped. Uh, and then you can get an eval board. I like this one because it's like breakable. You can see in the middle, they like can break it apart and wire up uh, Cat6 cabling. You don't even need like an ethernet connector. And then in between, uh, I think it's like a PMOD port. So you can just like, connect it to your ready to go PMOD uh, devices. And the chip is in stock. So if you want to purchase no it, yeah, you can get it. Um, don't forget, you'll need two, one for the transmitter and one for the receiver. But I think I'm going to make a breakout board for this chip. I really like it. I like the um, LTC 4311 for I squared C. It's been a great expander, lets you take I squared C up to you know 100 feet easily um with ethernet but this one because it goes over differential link it's going to be again 1200 meters or more yeah one of the cool things about this npi series this new product introduction often or sometimes or at least now that there's stuff when you see it here that might mean we're working on a breakout so that's well they coming the soon. new product for this week the mcv 3421 was two weeks ago's inpi so i liked it so much circle of life it's and I, I liked it so much i made a breakout board for it right. that's how you know i got the seal of approval that's this week's on MPI.